listeners. Um, this is episode 18 of the What About This. Uh, this one, we are talking Disneyland. Um, I'm Keith. This is Travis. I'm Kyle. Producer Josh. <laughs> Kyle is just staring at me. That went a, it went it a, went weird, a weird way. way. It's, we're leaving it. It's <laughs> yeah. fine. It's fine. It's dot um, com. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking as we were before we were recording this, and we wanted to try something new. So this month, we instead of having two separate podcasts because um, we started recording them on the same day, um, we recorded one longer conversation, and we're going to split it up into two parts. Um, part of the reason we wanted to do that is that we started this podcast as a way to get people our listeners you our listeners to have conversations and we wanted to show that these conversations are sort of loose and they don't take place in sort of episode ways like we don't just take one topic we kind of have gone all over the place pretty much since we've started having these conversations in real life three four years ago mm -hmm. so we wanted to try to something that or try to do something new and try to do it that way um so the it's going to end on kind of a cliffhanger this first one so this is for the first part um, of our episode 18 for the month of March, I guess, is when it's going to come out. Yeah. So um, so the first part was about Disneyland. And Travis and I were having a conversation a couple weeks ago about um, how we don't really understand, or Travis really doesn't understand when people say they hate Disneyland. And so we go from Disney, like talking about what, what it means to do that, and then we go into some other things about um, who, you know, sort of what Disneyland represents and how it is um, helping us sort of discover our inner selves and our stripping down artifice and, and sort of deconstructing some of the things, some of the barriers we put up. Um, and so that's going to be part one. And so we'll talk through that. And then towards the end, we start to get into some other things. And then that'll be the part two of the episode. Um, and it's going to end there. So if you want to hear the rest of the episode, you'll have to come back whenever the second part releases. Um, Josh. This is like the Empire Strikes Back of uh, podcast episodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to end on a kind of a cliffhanger. Um, so hang with us, though. We are putting out the second part. We've already recorded it. It will come out. Um, but we wanted to show you how these conversations happen a little bit more naturally um, across the two episodes. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Give it, uh, enjoy it. Give us some feedback on whether you think this works or not. Um, It'll be follow us on uh, Twitter at wat underscore podcasts. Like and uh, like us on Facebook. Mm. Rate and review us on iTunes. You can find us on all the podcast things: Stitcher, Podbean, Podcast dot com, all that. Beautiful. Welcome to What About This. Um, Travis and I were having a conversation two weeks ago about Disneyland. And Travis brought up that he doesn't understand when people say that they hate Disneyland. Uh, there's a lot of things that we talked about, but... Those are season pass holders at knots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and so this idea that like... Travis, you were saying something like, it's not that they don't hate Disneyland, they hate other things. That's usually what you're saying, right? Yeah, well, I guess I was thinking, how can someone hate Disneyland if you if you walk in? Like, what is it that they hate? Do they truly hate Disneyland? So I don't think they really, when they say that, they mean I hate Disneyland. Because I'm, I'm, I'm under the assumption that there's there's no way you can hate Disneyland. Right. Like, how do you hate, how do you hate it? And so I think, I, so then I started asking a question like, do they hate people? Do they hate crowds? Do they hate themselves? <laughs> like what? Like what is it that is so off-putting to you? Like why are you so angry? Because usually when they go, they're like, oh, it's the worst. Right. Like where is that? What is that? I, I would, I think it's more of, I think it. it uh, let me say this. I think it is majority, if not exclusively, males. <laughs> I, it's rare. Yeah. That I, you hear a woman say like, oh, I hate Disneyland because they. It seems like they don't. I don't know if you're a woman listening and you're like, I hate Disneyland, then you're the one. Yeah. Um, but it seems like it's like dads that are like, I hate Disneyland. And I think what it is, is it, plain and simple. I think they don't like being around people like that many, that, that like type of crowd. But the interesting thing too, is then when they walk in and are almost like surprised, you know, like that Disneyland yeah. is crowded. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Do you think it has anything to do, like you said, dad, do you think it has anything to do with like price? So the, the mom goes, I want to go to Disneyland. The dad's like, damn it, I'm going to have to bust into my kid's college savings <laughs> to get them all in there. Yeah. I mean, no, it could well, be, but. But that's usually like, I feel like never the, the saying. And even like you said, dads, I go, well, that, this is my problem is people who aren't dads that hate it, mm -hmm. mainly males. And I'm like, are, do you have like some sort of like, are you afraid that we're going to categorize you as something that you're so afraid of? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's like, you like Disney? Yeah. You're not a man? Right. And like this, so I, I don't know. I just, I, I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Now, if you say like, I can even, okay, I can even think, I could see if you say, I don't really like the rides at, I, I don't like rides. Yeah. Or... I'm just not that interested. I could take it. I'm very and, neutral. And you can also uh, acknowledge that there's a certain segment, like, and I, it's, this isn't a blanket statement, but like 18 to 24 year old single dudes. Disneyland's not for you. Like, it's it's not built for you. It's not designed for you. Doesn't mean you can't like it. Doesn't mean you can't. But like, if you're in that age group and you don't like Disneyland, you can say like, nah, I'm just not a fan. But you can't. Say, why would you say? But see, I hate Disneyland. But I also look at those guys. It's for you, man. Go on a date. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's. But you're like, like, but, but, but what you're not you're going by yourself. Is what, what I'm what, saying. Um, Typically. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I'm saying like, think about that demographic, like. There's a lot about as it a just, whole. Yeah, it's uh, fine if right. you want to go. Right, but there's nothing wrong with but it. But understand that they're not catering to what you right. want. Exactly. That right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. See, I would even right. push back. Is I, so I'm pushing back and saying, well, they're not not catering. You don't mm -hmm. like churros? Yeah. Right. Or bread no. bowls? Mm -hmm. No. I, <laughs> I no. There's a lot that they can't like there. I'm, but what I'm saying is like. That's the only thing I would say. I don't. I still don't understand the hate thing. That doesn't make any sense. But well, I can say but, like, yeah, it's not for me. I'm not gonna go. It's not like I may take it. I may take a date there. I may like when I'm married with kids, I'll go. But like, that's a different statement than saying like, oh, I just hate Disneyland. It's like, what well, do you hate? You hate joy. You hate right. happiness. Like, <laughs> yeah. what do you mean you but hate they, Disneyland? But see, that's the deal. They don't associate it with it. Right. But I also. You you kind of. Kyle, as a season pass holder, that's right. Um, you, yeah, full for a long disclosure. Time, you huh? would just go there and study. You yeah. would go there and hang out, walk around, grab a coffee. Right, just because. Yeah, I would go and I would I would sit and do homework on Main Street. Mm -hmm. I had like a spot. I was trying to be part of like a crew uh, called the Couch Potatoes at one point. <laughs> it was. And what? How old were they? We were we were talking about high school graduations at one point. I was the only person in the group that had not graduated in the fifties. Nice. <laughs> that had not graduated high school in the nineteen fifties. Nice. How do you fit the demographic? Would they and, have let you in? And. I think they would have let me in. It's just that I think I like I stopped being as consistent. They all had oh. really nice passes. They all had like the thousand oh, yeah, dollar yeah, passes, yeah, yeah. and so I didn't see them all summer. And I think they forgot about me. But all <laughs> that to say, yeah, but I'm not mad. Did they uh, have vests? They had. Patches they on had no. Oh, those are the Disney gang. No, no. What they did. <laughs> those they are real. Were, I heard. Those are real. Yeah. They were very simple. They just had buttons that said "couch potato," uh, "porch potato" on them. Porch Slightly potato. More. Yeah, because it was a. There's a porch. Where on, was your spot? There's a porch on Main Street that has these built-in wooden chairs, and they would just sit there on the porch and just hang. That's why it wasn't couch potatoes. It was the porch yeah, potatoes. Yeah, did I say couch that's potatoes before? But it's porch potatoes. That's what you You're are, right. and that's why you can You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Those guys might be listening, and they're going to come after you. Yeah, uh -oh. and so – sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> and But the reason I would go, and I think like the reason why those guys go – and just because you would think, like, oh, you're not doing anything. You just go and sit. It's because the, the most plain way to put it is it just feels good to be there. Does that make yeah. sense? Well, like, yeah. And so this is – that's – you remind me is one of the things that I, I also – when people go, oh, you just like it because it's nostalgic. And I go, um, no. I actually don't think that's true. I think that could be a part of it. But – I'm saying that I think Disney's such a genius, mm -hmm. and so this, so we had that conversation, yeah. and then it, it was after I, I hadn't been to Disneyland for a little bit because I, I don't have my pass right now. I think, yeah, I don't think you've gone yet. But a, but but so we were we were going, or I just had had this. Or you just gone or something? I forget it, what it was. Same, same mm -hmm. I, so we so so Kyle Kyle and his wife, um, they took me, my wife, and. Our, our little guy so for his first time mm -hmm. and then I'm having I'm I'm thinking through these conversations mm -hmm. I'm yeah. thinking through these recent conversations and so I'm very I'm I'm, I'm kind of looking around and I'm trying to feel and I'm trying to sense kind of like what's going on like how can you hate this place right now there's moments where I hate the way people walk 
Right. <laughs> I, yes. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I hate, I look at the lines and I choose, I have a choice to walk by the line, mm-hmm. get a fast pass, or right. spend two hours in a line. And that's right. my choice. But like to say that, like the only reason I like Disneyland is because it's nostalgic. It, like I just reject that. Yeah. There, there might be an element of that, but I go, then you're saying that people who, who have never gone as a child mm-hmm. can't go at 50 and enjoy it. Right. Right. Well, and I think there's also the sense that, and the, the other thing that we talked about, I, one of the points I made was that I've never talked to anybody who's any sort of uh, artist, creative person, uh, something like even engineer, architect yeah. that doesn't, isn't, not doesn't, isn't just like, oh, I like Disneyland, but is fascinated with and just holds Disneyland to like such a high regard. Mm-hmm. And again, there, again, there might be people out there, but most of the people I've talked to, because from top to bottom, what they do at Disneyland is at the top of its game. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and my, we even talked about logistics, like mm-hmm. the person who runs Disneyland, manages Disneyland day to day, like does the day to day operations can probably go to any major company and run, if not the whole company, a big part of their company. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I have a so my brother works for Disney and he made a great point is Disneyland is doing like a lot of kind of a lot of changes a lot of more like a lot of like renovations they're re-theming some different parts like they're doing they're changing paradise pier into pixar pier and all these different things and there's a decent amount of people that were like up in arms about it because they didn't want it to happen because they're like we like this and you know we can't believe you know disney is changing these parts of the park and my brother made a good point he said when has Disney ever like set out to do something like within the parks or things like that and and renovate or change something and it wasn't great? Like to the to the point where like where like they changed it and you go into it and you're like, I don't really like this. You always walk in and you're like, this is perfect. Well, yeah, yeah and, and you can say like I, it's not what it was. That's right. the most people's like I like the other thing better. Or you like but that you, land over that right, land. That's fine. Most people can't say like this is not well done. Right. You, you can't walk you in can't there and say like, it's not right. good. They, yeah. they yeah. didn't design this well. They didn't build it well. Like right. You could yeah. prefer like the different theme, can, yeah. but maybe that's because of nostalgia. Okay. So, right. okay, that, so and that's what I would say. So that's here's worth. a good example on that to, to both your points is uh, what was the um, Swiss. Uh, the, the Swiss, the Swiss Family Robinson house. Yeah, was now that, Tarzan house. Okay, oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where my nostalgia kicked in. I went, what, like, or, um, or the fact that they closed Tom Sawyer Island. Yes. is it closed? No, no. Oh, it, but they it, reopened. They it. kind of rethemed it. It's Re- like okay. pirate themed. Now. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. So there's. It was all, all so was that that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of having an opinion, you still right. have an opinion when you walk in, and and, and so, so the a, a big part of it was to what you guys are saying is is. When has Disney ever done anything, and it was it wasn't excellent, it wasn't great, it wasn't right, it wasn't beyond, you right. know? Mm-hmm. And so I was bringing up this this theorist who talks about how how Disneyland is actually the only true reality. Mm. It's like the ultimate reality because it doesn't. His thing is it it, it doesn't pretend to be something that it's not. You don't walk in and think that that is an actual mouse. Yeah. You don't think Mickey's real. You know that there's a human being inside of a costume. And so they even have things like, what is it? Uh, What's well, Fantasyland? Fantasyland. Uh, Fantasyland. So they have, fan- like the whole thing's a fantasy and you know that it's a fantasy. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of like, and Keith was saying something about like hyper reality. Yeah. But what was fascinating to me was, this is, I think this there's maybe up to this rocker a little bit. What what are you saying about that in terms of like our everyday life? You know what I mean? Like, so yes. If you want to get into it, so this is a he's a he's a French theorist from the mid century, mid twentieth century. His name is Jean Baudrillard. He's he's uh, he, he was theorizing postmodernism, and I actually have. So it's from a work called The Procession of the Simulacra, which his whole thing is about simulation. Mm-hmm. So this idea that. The, the more we sort of progress, there's like a progression of imagery or images as we uh, as we sort of go forward in time. So there, here's like the phases of the image. Like, so an image will reflect basic reality. So it's a reflection. So there's reality and then the image sort of reflects it. It's not perfect, it's, it's a little bit off of it. Um, and then it can mask and pervert basic reality. So we say, well, this, this picture actually isn't reality. It's trying to keep me from reality. Um, and then this is where it starts to get weird. It starts to mask the absence of a basic reality. So it's like the image and any image, and this, this is a general term, so it can be any image, 
points to the fact that there really isn't a reality behind it. And then, and this is where he says Disneyland comes in on some level, is that there isn't any connection between the image and reality itself. Mm. Um, it's its own pure simulacrum or simulation. So he's talking about simulation. And I think this is a helpful quote from him. He says, um, to simulate is to feign or to pretend to have what one hasn't. Right? So if we put mm. Disneyland through that prism. So here's his here's, here's other quotes on um, Disneyland. Where is it? It's, uh, hold on, this is great podcasting, I know. Um, so, he says, the objective profile of America then may be traced throughout Disneyland, even down to the morphology of individuals and the crowd. All its, all America's values are exalted here in miniature and comic strip form, embalmed and pacified. But this conceals something else, and that ideological blanket exact, uh, exactly serves to cover over a third order simulation. And here's the, I think, the fascinating thing. Disneyland is there to conceal the fact that it is the real country. All of real America, which is Disneyland, uh, uh, all of real America, which is Disneyland, just as prisons are there to conceal the fact that it is the societal or the social in its entirety. Right? So he's essentially saying that Disneyland is essentially far more it, there's not only is there no connection to the real in the in outside of Disneyland, but Disneyland actually is real, and everything outside of Disneyland is what he calls hyper real. That's crazy. So we all right, does Wait that define hyper real? Yeah. So yeah. hyper real. Um, I should. Well, it's almost like it's it's yeah. It's, it's all a, so it's all a construct. So right. It, so he's pointing out. So here's what he's saying about Disneyland. He said Disneyland. It, he wouldn't say that it's real in the sense that it's like. Those are actual buildings. Those are actual apartments. Whatever. Right. Or like, it's not an actual. It's not the actual Matterhorn. But what he's pointing out is that the fact that you can bring all of that together mm -hmm. to create this whole new world means that everything we do in the real world is a lot less real than we think it is. It's it, a lot less given. Is it's it, a lot less. It's all constructed just as Disneyland is. Is he is he almost saying like Disneyland is a place where you can like let your guard down? In terms of like um, in the world, it's like you're always trying to like construct your life and and portray it as like maybe something more than it is or something it's not. Uh, yeah. And Disneyland is a place where you can walk in and go like, I know that this is all a fantastic version. Right. Of so things. you can actually you can be more yourself than you are out in the real world. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can go into Disneyland realizing it's all fake, meaning mm -hmm. it's all constructed. So his whole idea is that. Because Disneyland is artificial, mm -hmm. it's more real than the real world because the real world pretends it's not artificial. And you don't and question it, it you when don't you're question, there. Right? Oh, He'll say crazy. it this way. The Disneyland Imaginary mm. is neither true nor false. It is a deterrence machine set up in order to rejuvenate in reverse the fiction of the real. <laughs> right? Okay. Hey. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you have your dictionary? Here's, here's the other one. <laughs> yeah. oh, here we'll go. Here's the end of that quote. In the quote real world, uh, to conceal it... Uh, it is meant to be an infantile world in order to make us believe that the adults are everywhere in the quote real world and to conceal the fact that real childishness is everywhere, particularly amongst those adults who go there to act the child in order to foster the illusions as to their real childishness. Mm. So he's saying that we all are really childishness outside of Disneyland, but we go to Disneyland to act out that childishness and that makes Disneyland far more real than when we're outside of Disneyland. Because what you're doing in Disneyland when you're like skipping around with yeah. like eating a churro, that's like really what you, that is like, that is yeah. really like what you want to be doing. No, that's All the time. You're like, like that is your You're time. pretending not to be that you're pretending. So, you're so being every day that you're self. outside Disneyland is you just pretending that you are not the person who skips around with right. a churro. Yes. With, yeah, so he's saying all we do outside of Disneyland is put on artifice. Yeah. When we go into Disneyland, which is presumably artifice and incarnate like it, it is artifice. it it's fully the artif self, artificial right? how many it things never are pretends you... not to be artificial but how many things are you then allowed to admit that you like inside disneyland the outside right. disneyland that you just okay. keep you, you you're just yeah. holding it all in okay. so tight wait wait so <laughs> the people who that is great that just blew my mind <laughs> <laughs> I'm still processing that right now. Josh, but when's the last Josh, time you, you, Josh you are real Josh when's the last yeah. time you've been to disneyland uh two years ago i need to go back just, yeah. Josh is trembling right now. Just, <laughs> Mike shaking. I'm, just, I'm never going to see things the same again. Mm -hmm. But okay, so to the earlier point we made about people who say they hate Disneyland, do you think that Ooh, those people spend? Okay. Uh, do you think they spend a majority of their time in there trying to build up defenses to those 
Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think uh-huh. they're, Absolutely. they're coming into Disneyland and they're saying like, look, this is too real for me. That I, I'm exposed. This exposes my inner self way too much. And so I'm going to hate it. So well, it, it, it exposes the false self that you've been constructing right, exactly. outside of Disneyland. That's the fascinating part about it is we act like we have, this is real and we're not putting on something and Disneyland basically in breaking down in simple terms is it deconstructs all the masks that you right. wear. Exactly. Dude, this this reminds me of thinking about, and I won't go, I'm not going to go too much into it because it's pretty crass, but it reminds me of like, dude, the Bill Burr sketch when he's like, and you're a man and so you have to act a certain way and somebody comes around with a puppy and like, all you want to do is just hug that puppy. Yes. But you can't because like, that's not what men do. Right. Yeah. That, and, and that's, and that's, and that's why I was pointing out that, that like, there's a certain part, segment of the population, 18 to 25 single dudes that say they hate Disneyland because they think it's not for them because of the artifice of Disneyland placing that it places on it. Meaning it, mm. you come in and it's all... It's all light and pink and princess and king and okay, so, okay. but, but so those guys want to be Prince Charming. Yes, and they so want to be Prince Charming. The, here's, and, here's, and they go out in the real world and they're not <laughs> because they're like I, I can't be that because that's whatever social construction has told them they can't be right because mm-hmm. to be Prince Charming is to buy into fantasy and things that they don't. And and the real the real mind trip of it is they just displace that out of Disneyland into other things. Yes. Well, that's which like we can talk about. when you have yeah. an individual like on a dance floor and they're trying not to dance, but their arms will start going and they have to like put yeah. it back yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. fear. <laughs> their so, yeah. slogan is "Come to Disneyland, find out who you really are." Yeah, yeah right. Oh, yeah. Geez. Well, but so here, here's I, I I not a whole lot of research, but I guarantee you this is going to hit home for everyone, especially if you had little sisters or little brothers mm-hmm. who are watching the latest Disney movie, aka. Beauty and the Beast and you and your brother had to say this movie's so stupid and all of a sudden you're singing oh, yeah, yeah. every song sitting right, on the couch with your little like, sister it's Travis it's a tale as old as yeah. time <laughs> yeah. literally, literally no, yeah. right. and, you go, and you're going like this and you look over and, at your brother and you go we still hate this. Right. And you're like, why were we rejecting <laughs> how then, much we love it? We have goes, to watch it one more time to make sure how much we hate it. Right. Yes. And then After your sister every goes, day. Like, I we just can... have to watch it one more time. I got to say how much I hate your it. I got to find goes, out one more thing. Your sister goes, okay, we can turn it off. And you're like, well, I mean, we're already this far into it. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Like, Ooh, you're no, like, we'll always she, be there. She, she's like, yeah. it's, the credits just rolled. Yeah. Like, we're, we're, we're getting we're, no idea. That, that's part. the title screen. Play we're just, we're, we're far enough into it. <laughs> it's, it. It's it's insane, actually. It's yeah. actually, it's it's kind of schizophrenic if you think about well, it. Because oh, yeah, yeah. we're pretending, we're sitting there pre- pretending to be two people. And Disney knows. Well, and, and they know. And because, they, the, because there's like right. Disney movies. That even you as an adult, you see that and you go like, that's that, you know, that's that movie. Like, you know, maybe, maybe. You know, when you have kids, you can buy that and watch it. And Disney is sitting there going, I know you wish you could buy yeah, that right yeah. now. Well, and, and, this they, is, and, and you will buy is, it. Yeah, it's years next. when you have kids. This is the other yeah, thing we talked you. about, too. Uh-huh. The other thing we talked about was how good Disneyland is, or not even Disneyland, how good Disney is at, and this is a term that some critics have used, but Disney is at Disneyfying things, like mm-hmm. of making sure that the thing they produce is Disney. And I, I think we can use sort of this idea of this the simulation how good they are at understanding that what they're producing is that sort of stripping down of artifice right mm-hmm. by producing artifice right so that's that's the truth of what they do is that they're like we're going to put something out there that we know is fake and pretend in order to get you to realize that you're stop pretend you, you can stop pretending mm-hmm. whether they state that that way or not is not the point but we were talking about how good they are at their culture at disney culture producing reproducing what it's trying to do which is which i think is yeah what this thing I, is. I think one of the questions well maybe we could even a little uh tap into people who hate disneyland like right. that, a little bit more but what i think they they um their abil- their ability in in kind of what you're saying right. and there uh is the whole deconstructing right. the self that's why you have these disney gangs and you have guys mm-hmm. that look like they're about to get on and they probably are i don't know harleys they look they um they bear the image of a scary person and they're the nicest tatted up group of people and they have all these different um, these different Disney gangs mm-hmm. and they actually have been known for stopping um, say a drunk guy in the park from doing something stupid right? right and so like so even in that is it's it's calling out that very narrative about what it means to be a man right. in that in that regard mm-hmm. which i find very right. fascinating yeah, and I, I so I think one of the things like so let's go back to the, my my yes. segment of the population, eighteen to twenty four year old. 
why I know that Disneyland is so good at what they do is because they did the thing to target that group specifically. They bought the rights to the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. And they turned them into Disney products. If you look at the Disney Marvel movies, they are not comic book movies. Right. They are Disney Marvel movies. The action adventure. Yeah. Right, action yeah. Because if you read comic books, they're a lot darker, a lot more violent, a lot mm -hmm. harsher. And and a lot more... A lot more sex. Well, yeah, yep. sex. And, and it, there's, it just, there's all this and, yeah. and there's all this stuff and, and there's, you know... Comic, the comic book world is a lot more volatile than the Disney Marvel movies will have you believe. And they've turned, but right. now they've turned Marvel into like a family product. Right. But so and yet, those same 18 to 24 year old dudes that say they hate, or women, or you know, girls too, I'll, I'll include them, but that say they hate Disneyland will go see the, 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 the new they Marvel. Black Panther. They, they'll yeah. go see Ar Avengers Infinity War because it's playing into that part of their artifice that they that they're seeking to strip down. So that's what's that's what that's what uh, you remind me of is the 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 genius behind Disney mm -hmm. is they can both take on Star Wars. Right. They could where they take over and Pixar seems a little bit more like you could go, yeah, that's Disney. Mm -hmm. But when I think Star Wars, I don't think Disney. Oh, that's right. We right. can talk about this. But but when I walk into Disney and I see Star Wars, they don't take away from the Star Wars brand. Right. Right. But the Star Wars brand, if you will, or Disney is able to Enhance. bring yeah. Star Wars underneath their yeah. umbrella and you don't flinch. Right. And I go, there's a genius in that, mm -hmm. right. that you're, you're able to take on yeah. Marvel. And and aren't they, what, where is, is it, aren't they creating a whole lane? Uh, Star Wars land. Well, yeah, Star, Star Wars, Wars land, land within Disneyland. They've yeah. done stuff in Disneyland But what about California? Cal they're doing, oh, they're changing all of... I mean, well, they Tower yeah, of the, Terror to yeah. They're Guardians talking the about. Galaxy. I think it's going to be all of the Hollywood area is going to be Marvel. Right. Okay. So yeah. so and no one's no one's going to be upset about it. No one feels like it yeah. doesn't. No one feels like that within Disneyland doesn't make well, sense. Yes, that's that, the key. Not yeah, only that, key. Yeah. but now we're going to have a generation of people that will always connect Disney with Star Wars. And right. Star Wars was nowhere near Disney back then. No. The like, well, there were they were distinct worlds. They you know like, why? Because Disney didn't create it. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah. what I'm saying is like, well, that's the other thing we can talk about how Disney doesn't often I don't want to say Disney isn't original. What they the stories they produce aren't original. The way they do it is original. But like they wait to see if something is successful and then they yeah, make it the, Disney. Except yeah, Harry, absolutely. Except, but, except but, Harry Potter, which well, they kind of right. messed up on that but, one. But the whole point yeah. but my <laughs> my point being is like you're right, they don't we never would have connected Disney and Star Wars. But as soon as Disney bought Star Wars, everybody in the world was like yeah, that makes sense. Well, yeah, like, that's yeah fine. okay. And yeah, also, no, I get it. Also, too, when you go into like Disneyland, you see Star Tours. You are, you don't not you don't just want to go on the ride. You want right. to fully immerse yourself in that world. You're like, just take me, take yeah. me. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Well, and so that's that's the great thing. Like what you're saying, Travis, is that is that Star Wars was birthed so apart from Disney, but yet now. It being under Disney, like when you walk into the park, doesn't seem weird. It doesn't, right. it doesn't seem, seem yes. like why is Star Wars in Disneyland? It just seems like oh, it's like it's a, this is what's happening. Yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's it, and almost almost this is this is eerie. It's almost like it's always been there. Right, like right. The, that's what's like, what like it's, point out. Like, yes. it's finally, it, it, like it's finally home. Like right. it's finally in its right place. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like it, I didn't flinch. You realize you never thought of them together, but you realize as soon as they place them next to each other, like. Oh, I guess I kind of always did think of them together. You're like Disney. I'm glad you have Star Wars to like take care of it how it should be taken right. care. Yeah, yeah. Do you, yeah. Okay, so uh, just real quick, I want to touch back on your point about the gangs. Do you think, like, in the theory that mass creates mass? Do you think in Disneyland, like these sub realities create more sub realities? So you're creating like you have your gang and you're you're just completely different people in this world. And same thing with the porch guys. Mm. You're like you're creating all of these little sub realities inside this sub reality so you can basically be anybody you want to inside of this Disneyland park. Well well I, th well, I think um, yeah maybe I think with the when I think about the gangs right or mm -hmm. the porch potatoes you know or just you going in there and being these guys this is this is who they are they're tatted up they look they 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 have the look that society would say, "Ooh, those guys look scary." Mm -hmm. um, again, because we stereotype negatively, right. positively. Yeah. And I think I think they're actually really great guys on and off the court, if you will. So they come in Disneyland. That's you know that isn't a front. They don't go. They they don't like put on tattoos before they go in there. Yeah. Right. You know they are tatted up and they probably are bikers. I don't know, but they're yeah. like family men. Like, and so you you kind of go. Um, I I don't I don't know if there's. Um, 
You're saying so you said sub realities or sub so yeah like we have in disneyland you have all these sub realities all these different lands but yeah inside these lands we're creating i, I don't know like communities but it's like uh it's not like a community that lasts outside the park but it's a community inside the park and i guess your own little sub reality within those sub realities I yeah guess. i mean those guys have been written up in oc weekly like they mm. people know about them so <laughs> but, they do, they there's, there's, a, like, lo- there's a lawsuit. Like, there's a lawsuit going on between two gangs right now. But so here's the here's <laughs> yeah. the weird thing about that. And back to our other point about the the function of Disneyland, the artifice in Disneyland is a, an ability to strip down those. How many of those guys do you think associated with each other outside of Disneyland first? I don't know. Mm. How many of you think um, that those oh, yeah, guys I, knew each other? They, they did. They uh, did. I, I yeah I, yeah I'm I'm pretty sure these are groups of friends i don't know if they have like recruiting in disneyland <laughs> well no i guess what i'm saying is like so that the, the disneyland gang existed first inside disneyland before it existed outside disneyland <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta patch that, in that through was my knowledge point. of my the point classics. Is like these guys weren't a disneyland gang got it into disneyland they got formed it. the disneyland gang in so in terms of this idea of hyper real of disneyland being more real that truly the disneyland gang only exists in disneyland yes, See, that's because, that's what i'm asking okay yeah. that's yeah that is a great yeah it's good that you had covered it because to your question is yes um because they couldn't do it outside right. they had to do it in there because right. it was safe and it was right. acceptable to it was like, acceptable yeah. because mm-hmm. outside they had to put on the artifice of not being a gang because that's yeah. not acceptable in real life. And that's what what's his name would say, basically. Yeah, he's what, saying like uh, they can. Const- what's his, how do you not Baudrillard? Uh, Baudrillard, Baudrillard, right? Yeah. So he quotes Bordeaux in this. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, they're all kind of yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things, that, one, something that I was really sensitive to is we sat, we just sat down at the vineyard. Is that mm-hmm. what is the vineyard? That and, oh and, yeah. And and so I was tripping out because I was looking and the sun was setting. It was about five p.m. and I went, "I'm where we go? I'm what in do Napa. you say?" <laughs> I think Kyle goes. We're in Tuscany. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it was, it was insane. So, so to mm-hmm. this point of hyper, like I also think that when you walk through, mm-hmm. and and it was interesting because it was almost like the first time that I was more focused on someone else experiencing Disneyland mm-hmm. than myself because it was my my son's first time. Right. And um, but I was also very observant. I was walking through in these trees, and it's almost this is what i wish life was like right. it is like all the all my ideals right right are wrapped into one like the main street even right. when we walk when you walk into california and you have the farmers market and it's this a very la right. hollywood shops S- and, like and you just go this is this is how i imagined it to be mm-hmm. this is what i want in my life and then i had this moment when i went I gotta drive back home tonight. Right. right. Like I'm not staying in Calif- uh, the California hotel. Yeah, the Grand like, California. Yeah. Like I, I like what, there's something in uh-huh. me that desires this like ideal, right? right. And right. they almost kind of go, "This is it." And right. so is that <laughs> why you think that you have these families too that like they're so exhausted by the end of the day, but like they also don't want to leave. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, as you're walking away, like you go through downtown Disney, you're going to, to where the trams are. Do you ever have that moment where you're like, you can feel parts of your imagination slowly decaying? <laughs> yeah, as they're you like, reach because, you have to, because you have to get back to that fake self now. Right. You it have says, to like, put the I'm mask back, back on. I'm back in the parking structure and I need to be a certain way now. So much yeah. so that the, was the, not the, mon- is the monorail or the tram? The tram's a ride, but all of a sudden when you're on it, you have to act professional. Right. <laughs> you right. Have to act like an adult. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, so the monorail, like, there's always like, you be like, oh, like if the uh, family's in with kids, they try to take up as little, little amount of space as possible, don't run around. They're in the park, like, their kids are running into you. They're just shoving oh, yeah. their just by you. Oh, yeah. Biting my ankles. <laughs> yeah. but, like, in the, but in the monorail, they're like, no, we have to act. But so, we have yeah. To act. Like, it's like they've put, like, as soon as those pneumatic doors, you know, psh, mask goes back <laughs> off. Yeah. So, but so you enter, it's almost like to your point, is that they're there all day, they're exhausted. They're willing. It's almost like you're going there in search of something, right? Not right. just let's go have fun, because mm-hmm. you can go have yeah. fun with a three year old anywhere, <clears throat> right? But it, and you can go. Well, are you trying to capture what happened to you at three at thirty three right. now? Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't know. I don't really buy that. Um, and so I almost feel like to the point of like, why do grown fifty year olds love it and grown twenty five year olds? Because there's it? another to the, the other corollary to the flip side of your question, like I or your statement. I don't get why people say they hate Disneyland. There's a part of me that that doesn't trust someone who's too into Disneyland either. <laughs> I'm like, okay, like you know that you can't stay there, right? You know that like, so there's a part of me that's like, that's also, I mean, because 
in order if you buy into it too much you've bought too much into artifice again and you're just yeah. like that's also not real yeah like so there's yeah. another side so, that you so, can cross so, the you can cross okay, the, so the rubicon in, in some way what are you looking to escape yeah or what yeah are you exactly like what do you if there's a part where you go too far and you're like you you've just become this other person now that's not that that's Pat, gone past your sort of childish desires. Now you're yeah. trying to become another person, and you're like, that's still not the thing you're supposed to be doing. Do you do you think that has anything to do like people who are there pretty much every day, like they have a hard time coping with reality? Well, <laughs> that's going to be a problem with what we're talking about because. <laughs> we would say that what's outside of Disneyland isn't more real than what's inside of Disneyland, but... We're not necessarily even saying that, but right. we're saying there's something yeah. interesting mm -hmm. going on yeah, that, that, exactly. that Disney there's has... There's still something that you're trying to... You haven't... In fact, there, you could almost say that, that you haven't... If you were too into Disneyland, you haven't truly understood Disneyland on some level because like Disneyland is there to help you strip artifice down, not build more artifice up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so if you're trying to do that, then maybe you are... I mean, you can't make a blanket statement no, on course. everybody, right? right. That like, there just certain, because you really enjoy it. Because there can be people who go there every day to really try to understand. The, it's weird, but you think like they really are trying to understand themselves better by going to Disneyland every day, right? It's mm -hmm. like a form of therapy for them, well, right? Yeah, right. or even if you went once a week, that's pretty mm -hmm. intense. Right. And you have a guy like um, Bob Goff, author yeah, um, right. of Love Does, He he like... He goes to where does he go? His it's office hours. Tom, he, Tom Sawyer's Island. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, if you uh, want to come see me, my office hours but, are on." But it's such a brilliant move. I'm thinking about that now in the context of this conversation. Like, hey, such never a has to have move. office hours. Well, one never has to have <laughs> office hours, but even as someone who has to hold office hours, students will come into my office, understanding that there's a certain interaction, there's a certain sort of artifice to art, there's a certain role they have to play when they come into my office. It's mm -hmm. student. I have to be studious. You have an office. To, I do. Oh, yeah. wow. At, at one of my uh, campuses I teach at. I All right. Office. Moving on. Smaller. Yeah. Um, so he does that. So he goes into Disneyland, and I don't know if this is his reason. It could be. But he goes into Disneyland. As soon as those students cross the threshold of Disneyland, they drop what they drop the role of student. Ah, they're faced with the false. And so they come to, they come to Professor, Dr. Goff? Professor? Uh, I think it's Bob. Bob. No. They come to Bob, whatever. <laughs> yeah. they, come to, they, go to, they go across. So they, they, not only do they have to cross the threshold, which is one barrier that sort of reduces, then they cross the river to go then to Tom Sawyer Island, which is a whole other... So now they're deep. Yeah, so they've gone to literally the heart of Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been able to... I just thought of an analogy between this and the heart of darkness. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not Recalled there, but I'm life. just saying... So, but they're going farther and farther in to just strip themselves of this artifice of student, of... of Understanding, and they, he's reduced. He's he's done away with the the professor student relationship, and they can be open and honest with him because he's been stripped. As right, because he he's also that the process. same thing. He's gone. Yeah. He's gone ahead. He's already there. They already understand that his artifice is stripped down, and so they can now meet him in, in an equal place, and they can have a more fruitful discussion about their work. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be my guess of why why he does that. I, that and I guarantee, if we asked him, he would. He would let us know. Yeah. yeah. So all of like the walls that you would have up normally, they're completely dismantled mm -hmm. by the time you get to him and have yeah. that conversation. Yeah. And then yeah. he goes, "What do you want?" And this is why, so, like, so you can't, yeah, because you can't even see the outside. No, right. Yeah. And so there's a sense of like there were there were, there there have been times in my teaching career where I've gone out, I've taken the class outside and to have out conversations, and they're almost always really good conversations because mm -hmm. they they're outside the walls of the classroom, which is we think that's where quote, real learning happens. Right. But there's no more reason it can't happen in a in like a, uh, an outdoor amphitheater on steps outside of, you know, in a lawn on, you know, people with... St I've literally had students in hammocks um, and we've had fruitful conversations about deep conversations about literature and it's, I think, partly because we've been able to strip the artifice of the classroom away. And they would think, that's not a real classroom out there. It's like, why not? Yeah, why? why, why? Or is that's it no real less classroom? Real. It's yeah. no less real than, than what we did inside. We built a... We, you know, I mean, we can talk about the history of education while we're in inside. Um, it starts in England, which is cold most of the time. So mm -hmm. not in the Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't start there. <laughs> Good reason for. Or not in England, but Germany. It starts in Europe, and the, anyway, it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, there's a reason why we tend to put up walls, and we we tend to act the role of student, and I act the role of professor. And if we can strip those down, sometimes it's better for for a conversation with the student when I can 
It's not that I'm not the professor in that moment. It's just that we can stop pretending that, the, that there are certain things that we have to do and certain things we don't have to do. Mm. And certain things we can't talk about and certain things we can talk about. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're creating a new space that they're mm -hmm. unfamiliar with, yet they've become more themselves and you get maybe even more out of them. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that you said, like, when when did they first start, what, education and classrooms Well, if you think about, yeah, the classrooms. Is, it's, I think it's almost more the meaning we give right. that classroom as yeah. if it's the, the most ideal place to learn. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we've... We've yeah, just, we've decided. Yeah, we've decided that this is where learning happens. So even though it doesn't have to happen only there. Yeah, or it happens better. Right, or That's it happens it. right. Mm -hmm. So they they think that this is where quote, this is where real learning happens. Yeah, and, and you're like what? Just like we would say, like outside of Disneyland is the real world, and inside the Disneyland is the artificial world. And it's like if you think about the classroom, it's it's a little bit more artificial. Mm. than outside the classroom. Well, and purely on, say, inspiration alone, right? So even right. that was that was my thing with this. How can you hate Disneyland? Again, is I don't even really think they mean that. You know, if, mm. if you're if you really dug deep, like what what's going on, man? Right. Like, yeah. Um, you you know, think like, they proud. fear it? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe on a deep subconscious. Like, well, it could be not, fear. It could, there's not a bunch the, of things it could be feeling, but yeah, not like, the place itself, but it's the same people who go to see a movie like Star Wars and like. No way that can happen, man. There's no way. Instead of just like opening their their mind to and appreciating it for what it is, instead yeah. of what reality says it should be. Yeah. Yes. So so if you go there and like he said earlier, is is uh, any artist or creative mind, um, you walk in there and you're just it's inspiring that they were yeah. able to pull this off, even with like their ability to create the depth mm -hmm. and to make you to make you almost feel like I'm here, aren't I? Right. <laughs> like. I'm in this right. place. And so you go, what sort of vision does that yeah. uh, architect have or whoever is involved in that, that, that right. process? Cause, and then Disney World right. is a whole other Well, it level. literally is a miniature world. Like they, the, this, yeah. The, they like, you go on like freeways <laughs> outside of freeways. the, uh, <laughs> outside of like the parks and like you're still on Disney property. You know what's funny too yeah. is like, if you think yeah. about that, What's interesting about that is that Epcot is the inter what's the international one where they have Epcot, all the, Epcot where they have the World's Fair. You, they've equated that with the the Animal Kingdom one and with mm -hmm. the the Disneyland version. Like so, they've equated the literal real world with all of these other fake worlds already. But it's also so good that now I feel like I don't need to travel <laughs> because like <laughs> well and yeah, like, yeah. I've been to, I went to fifteen countries today. Right. <laughs> um, so, but what Simulate. I think what happens yeah. what what I do think is interesting is about this idea that. As we progress, sort of in this, sort of towards this idea of the simulation, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've realized because we did talk about Disney culture yeah. and how Disneyland is not selling me a product. Like mm -hmm. Disneyland is, they're not interested in selling me like the because the product. If you want to get down to the brass tacks, like the product is like either the ticket or the churro or the corn dog, mm -hmm. like or like the the T-shirt. But they're not interested. In, they don't care about that. Right. Whether I ever buy a T-shirt from Disneyland, they don't. They don't care. They're selling me. They're selling me the real. They're selling me that the the brand. Yeah, they're selling me that. They're selling me the 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 the, the, the concept of Disneyland or like the experience, right? Thing. The experience, that, the emotions. That's what they're truly selling. Right. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. That's it. That's all I have to say okay. about that. Well, guys, you can find this podcast on iTunes, Podcast.com, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, and uh, anywhere you can get podcasts from. Mm. Also, we have an email address, which is. Do we have an email? Do we have an email? No, we don't no, have. No, we have a email. Twitter. <laughs> what <Okay>. about this? <laughs> <laughs> we have it's, um, a, a wat underscore podcast. That's us on Twitter mm -hmm. at wat underscore podcast. You can and, reach out to us and follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Talk to us. We like love us to and rate and review us on iTunes. That's that way. It, like it sort of it, it reaches more people. The more people that rate and review us and. It allows us to sort of keep doing this. We want you guys to get involved. Yeah. yeah. Also, if you're organized, maybe you can join the team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A year later, we didn't know if we had an email. If you've got a if you've got a knack for people. gentlemen and emails, boy, do we have an opportunity? <laughs> Again, this for wide you. net. I don't know if we want to cast. <laughs> boy, do we have an opportunity for you? <laughs> Just what is the Venn diagram of people <laughs> good with gentlemen and emails? 100%. <laughs> yeah.
I just I don't know. Well, fill this position, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to cast a wide net, and so we'll have a lot of opportunities. We're gonna get ZipRecruiter. Facebook's targeting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Facebook's targeting algorithm would not be helpful here. <laughs> yeah. What two things are we you looking clearly for? Clearly, desperately someone need some likes behind men, the scenes work. Though. Someone we who not. likes emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Brink here from Super BS. Talking about the things you know you love and the things you'd love to know. Join us weekly for a podcast about video games. Mostly.